again, remember the diff one of the major differences between American and European style dining is the placement of your hands. It's perfectly acceptable in European or continental style dining to have your wrist above the table. So let's say your, your utensils, remember, are crossed. The fork is on top, the knife is on the bottom, and again, the blade is facing toward me. Again, this gives me an opportunity to use my napkin to finish a conversation or to engage someone in a really deep level of conversation. And it's okay to lean in a bit if that's necessary. It also gives you the opportunity to take a sip of water and you just simply pick up your utensils again and go on with your eating. Now, in American style dining, the if you're at the very end of your meal, we're going to discuss the very end of your meal now, it is actually placed toward the bottom. And the easiest way to remember this, if you can visualize a clock, and 10.20 on the clock, if you can look at your dinner plate, this is the easiest way to remember 10.20 on the clock. So this is actually the correct way for both American and Continental style dining. Sometimes you may see times down, which is perfectly acceptable in both eating styles, but also here in the United States, you mostly see tines up. And that is the correct way to let the wait staff know or your hostess know that you are completely finished with your meal. Now let's discuss, let's say that you are on a business lunch or a business interview and you're not quite sure what to order. I'm going to give you some tips. If you are not quite sure whether to order the lobster, the steak, or a salad, you can always ask your host, what would you suggest? What are you having today? I know you eat here often. And that way you can tell whether your host is just going to simply have a salad or if they're going to have the salmon from the menu. Do yourself a favor and order something that's very easy and simple to eat. I would stay away from spaghetti, anything that's sloppy foods, big juicy hamburgers. Enjoy those after your interview or after your lunch interview. Go and celebrate, but don't order them for the meal across from the person that's interviewing you. It's just too difficult to eat. Something that's really safe to order is always a chicken breast. You're going to have a knife and fork. Salads are also very easy to maneuver, especially nowadays because they cut the lettuce in such small bites for you already. So just make a conscious decision before you order your meal. Again, let's visualize you are at a business lunch and you have six to eight people sitting around your table and someone in the third or fourth seat asks you to pass the salt. Do you pass the salt or do you pass both the salt and pepper shaker? And you actually take both the salt and pepper shaker and you pass it to the person on your immediate right because remember it's the third or fourth person down on your right and they will take both the salt and pepper shaker and pass it along. The easiest way to remember is you just pass both. You just don't pass the pepper or the salt. You take both in your hand and pass it along. Same thing goes for bread. Let's say you're sitting again at a table of six to eight people and you asked, you're asked to pass the bread and you're the closest person. So I'm the closest person to the bread basket. And never take, if someone asks you to pass the bread, never take a roll first and then pass it along. You always pass it along immediately to the person that has made the request. Now let's say you are in the middle of a meal and you need to excuse yourself. We're all adults and we all know why we need to excuse ourselves during the meal. So there's absolutely no reason for you to explain where you're going. So you simply pull your chair out, push your chair out, and you do not put the napkin on the table. The napkin actually goes in your seat and you excuse yourself to where you need to go. Now, a lot of times restaurants will refold your napkin and put it back on the table. And we all know that that's really not necessary. Once a napkin or a fork or a spoon has been used, it never touches the table again. So as you enter the table or enter your chair, you simply take the napkin and put it back in your lap. And that is the correct way to exit a table. And just so you'll know, and this goes for both American and Continental style dining, the napkin never touches the table until the very end of the meal.
So let's say this is the very end of the meal, I'm getting ready to leave. The napkin simply goes on the table on the left hand side of your table setting. I'd like to demonstrate for you now the correct way to seat yourself at a business luncheon. So let's visualize you have six to eight people sitting around a table and it's great when everyone knows how to enter a chair correctly. And actually it should be the right side of the chair with your left hip. So let's put your left leg in, you swing your right leg around, pull the chair in to where you can seat comfortably in the center of the seat. Now let's say you need to excuse yourself during the meal. I remember earlier I told you to make sure you put your napkin in your lap, not on the table. Remember a napkin or a used utensil never touches the table again once it's been used. So to excuse yourself you just push the chair out, you get out the same way you walked in, you leave the napkin in your chair, and you exit yourself from the table. I am often asked the correct way to eat soup and how to remember. And it's very easy, never hesitate from ordering soup if that's what you choose from the menu. You simply take a soup spoon, again I'm going to demonstrate here for American style. My left hand is in my lap, I'm right handed, and I simply just take the soup, whether it's a cream based or a broth based soup, and I spoon away from me, and I actually take the spoon and I pour the soup from the side of the spoon into my mouth. I know, I know, it's not the, the most fun way to eat soup, but it's actually the correct way. If you're served crackers with soup, believe it or not, you do not crumble the crackers in its package. You actually use your bread plate for your crackers. So you open the package of crackers, you take them out, you, you break off a bit of your cracker and, and you eat it individually. You never put crackers and crumble them up into your soup when you're at a formal affair or business function. Actually, this is my favorite part of the meal and that's dessert. And I especially love chocolate. So let's talk about the dessert course. When you see the spoon and the fork at the top of your plate, you know you're going to have dessert which we all like to have that. So you simply take your fork and enjoy your cake or your pie. Or if you have ice cream, there's a spoon at the top of the table setting. I love coffee and tea with my dessert. So let's say you have six to eight people and the cream and sugar are a little ways down from you. You simply ask the closest person to please pass the cream and the sugar. So once that's passed to you, another common question, when you use sugar, where do I put the wrapper? Because it can leave an unsightly mess around you. You simply take the sugar, use it in your coffee or tea, and the wrapper goes underneath, you just tuck it underneath the saucer. You stir quietly your coffee or tea, the spoon goes on the back side of the cup, and you enjoy your coffee with your great piece of chocolate. So let's say you're at a business interview lunch and you really want this job and the conversation is going very well. When it comes to dessert, what do you do? And you're the guest, so your host immediately asks, do, would you like dessert? The wait staff comes over and they may go through the dessert menu. So you can ask, you can simply ask your host, are you going to have dessert? It's perfectly fine to ask, or you can kind of take a feel as to whether your host is going to have dessert or not. If it's during lunch, probably not. He probably has a very important day plan and he needs to get back to the office. So just kind of play it out. You'll know what to do. Let's take a few moments and talk about ooh yuck situations at the dinner table that you might encounter and hopefully you're not guilty of any of these. Let's talk about chewing with your mouths closed. This is an absolute must. If not, you, you may look like a horse. It's just absolutely awful when you hear or look at someone that's not chewing with their mouths closed. So make sure you're not guilty of that. Also, ladies, you're guilty of this one. Never apply lipstick or groom at the lunch table or the dinner table. Always excuse yourself when you need to reapply or to brush your hair. Another ooh yuck moment might be, let's say you're devouring your meal, it's absolutely wonderful and you're starving, and you have something on your knife that just looks divine. 
never take a utensil.